uh, today's lecture is something I call cube, uh, doubling cube 101. It's the very basics of doubling cube, and if you're an advanced player, you're probably going to be pretty bored, but you might learn something. It, I always start out explaining the cube this way. In this position, I ask if red is on roll, and it's a money game or unlimited game, what's the cube action? And good players know that this is a double and a take. Why is it a take? Most beginners think it's a big drop because it doesn't look like blue has much of a chance to win. But as good players know, there are 36 possible rolls of the dice, and red is going to miss if he rolls a 1, except for double 1. And that means there's 10 misses, which is each uh, 1 out of 36 is worth about 2.78%. So blue has about a 27 0.8% or close to 28% chance of winning the game. That's more than 25%, so he's better off taking than dropping. He's still going to lose, but he loses less by taking than by dropping because we all know that the take point is 25%. This is a double and a take. And as you can see, Extreme Gammon says it's a double and a take, gives you the odds, and I then on paper show why you lose less by taking than you would by dropping. If you drop, you'll lose an average of one point per game, and if you take, you save 11%, you basically lose 0.88 points per game, or if you were playing for a dollar a point, instead of losing a dollar, you lose 88 cents. So you save 12 cents, or about 12 cents. It just, it averages out to about that. Actually, you save 11.1 .1 cents, so that's the point. It's a 25% Oops, that's cute. It's a 25% take point. Uh, so we all know that that is your basic take point for money. However, uh, the, the reason it's 25% in this position is because the cube is dead. Once uh, blue takes the cube, he has no advantage or additional winning chances because he's holding the cube. When you get to a racing game or any game where there's more rolls to go, you do get some advantage in holding the cube. So you can take it, the cube for less than 25%. As a matter of fact, Extreme Gammon says you can take the cube down to as low as 20%. This number is too low for practical purposes because this can only be used if you have a perfectly efficient recube, which uh, you almost never get. And if you waited for it, you probably have waited too long and lose your market. So we've determined that the effective live cube take point the value of holding the cube on average in a racing game uh, in, uh, uh, in an unlimited game is really about 21.5%. We take out, we get an extra about 3.5%. So 21.5% is the magic number that we use for an average. Now that could vary depending on how many rolls are left and the type of position, but it's a fairly good number to use. And if you're playing match play, it's the same thing. You'll see that there's a dead cube take point and a live cube take point if you have a perfectly efficient recube. And then something in between is the real number. Uh, usually that in between number is something about 68% of the difference. Instead of going, uh, instead of going right in the middle, you go 68% a little bit closer to here. Now, um, let me um, take it to the next step. Uh, by the way, a future version of Extreme Gammon is going to show that. It's going to make a column. I've been working with uh, Xavier for quite a long time uh, on the development of, uh, of upgrades to this, and, and he's agreed that we will eventually have these numbers, uh, the average live cube take point, and a third column in the middle. I can't wait because it'll be nice. In the meantime, what I've done is I've just made my own charts on take points that show those numbers. Okay, but now what happens if you have cube vig, if you have some power of the cube? Here's a racing position that's a pure race. And because there, if blue takes the cube, he has some advantage in holding the, the cube. His take point isn't 25%. Let's use the 21.5%. So over the board, that's the number that I would use. And how do you decide whether or not uh, red should double and blue should take? Well. There are several methods. There's Trice, Kleidman, Keith, Count. Uh, 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 there's Lamford's uh, formulas. There's all kinds of formulas. But I generally use the Keith count. And 
I happen to give you an example of a position where the key works beautifully. Basically, I take the pip count of 62, and I add for wastage extra checkers on the one or two point or openings on the four or five or six. And in this case, the wastage is three pips, two pips for a checker here and one for here. So he has 65, and we add one seventh. Why do we add one seventh? That is, uh, I'm penalizing red to compensate for the value of holding the cube that blue gets for blue's cube big. So that's what Tom Key from Walter Trace uh, came up with. And I asked Tom, why one seventh? Why not one sixth or one eighth? He says, I don't know, is one seventh worked? And he backed into it. He found out that the number seems to give you the right answer. So we have 65 divided by 7 is 9. And we always round down. So we add 9 to 65. We have 74. I'm going to put a finger on the 7 and a finger on the 4. So I don't forget 74. How's that for a cute trick? Now I go to blue. He has 69. He also has three pips of wastage. He has 72. 72 to 74. The difference is 2. The Keith count tells us that you have a bare take when the doubler is over by 2. Now we know the take point is 21 and a half. So this must be slightly over 21 and a half to be a take. So this would be a, a, a take. And it's a double if you're over by four or less. Since your opponent has a bare take, you know it's a double. So this would be double take, even though he has less than 25%, because the second that he gets the cube, his winning odds go up. Let's see if it's right, first of all. Double take. He has 21.8%. He needs 21.5 to take, according to our average rule. And look, it's barely, barely a take. So the Keith count works. The numbers work. And by the way, you can check it. Uh, go to Analyze, Race Formulas, Keith Count, and look at this. The computer actually came up with the same numbers I came up with and says it's a, either a double or a redouble and a take. And here's the formula right here, right in your extreme gamut. So you can check yourself and see if you came up with the right numbers. Now, the Keith Count isn't always this accurate. There are plenty of positions where it's going to be off by 1% or 2%, but for the most part, it's it's pretty good. Uh, but the key thing I wanted to show you here is that because he has 20, say, 22%, let's round it off, the second he gets the cube, he has about another 3 to 4% uh, cube vig. He's going to win more. Why is he going to win more when he's holding the cube? This is cubeless equity. This is how often he would win if you played the game out to the end with nobody using the cube. But since he can use the cube, what happens if blue gets to be an 80% favorite and he redoubles and, and red drops? Now blue has won a game 100% uh, of the time that he would have lost 20% of the time if he didn't have the cube. So that's why he has that extra power. At the same time, let's say that red get, gets better and he gets up to 80 or 85%. He's still going to lose this game 15 or 20% of the time because he can't use the cube to end it. So the combination of blue blue being able to use the cube and red not being able to use the cube increases this number and increases the odds of blue winning the game. Um, so that's really basic cube theory 101. You can apply the same thinking in match play when you have a dead cube and a live cube take point, and, and there's generally going to be uh, there could be a very significant difference in those numbers between dead and live. At some scores, you can have tremendous cube big, big power to recube, particularly if your opponent's take point uh, is very high on the recube, uh, and, it, and uh, you, you have a, a racing game, you have a, a quite a bit of power, especially if there's a lot of rolls to go. If there's only a few rolls to go, you have virtually no uh, cube big, and therefore the take points 25%. I'll show you one more stock position that I like to show people, and that's a three-roll, three-roll position. In this position, uh, blue has uh, about 20%, and he can't take because his take points 25% because he can never get in a recube that matters. He might be able to redouble if he has to re-rolls doubles, but at that point he's already won the game. So here it's going to be a big pass, even though uh, he has... Uh, close to 20% uh, take point. Let's see. What's the classic three roll? Three roll. There's six here and six here. Let's use this example. 
Here he has over the 21.5%. This is a better example. But he's got no chance to give a recube that matters. And that, therefore, his take point's 25%. And it's a big pass. And if he had 21.2% in a race, like the race I showed you, he'd have a big take. Not a big take. He'd have a take. I hope this was of interest to you. I hope it gives you some insight. I hope it inspires you to learn the Keith count. Uh, I'm very uh, uh, thankful that Tom Keith and Walter Trey started with his and, and Tom improved on it. And most of the studies that have been done, and Tom did a very extensive one, shows that Keith is just a little bit more accurate than Trice overall. In some positions, Trice is awfully good also. But use something other than just guesswork. <laughs> this is uh, Phil Simborg for the USBGF, and thank you for watching. And thank you for your support of the USBGF. I always want to say that because we really do appreciate your membership.